All right, chemistry. So I'm wearing my my GoPro on my uh, chest strap. So I have not done this before. So hopefully this works out. I'll give you a quick little overview of uh, some different plastics. Um, each unit that we go through has an environmental topic, and uh, this this unit is on plastics in the ocean. And so before we start talking about plastics getting in our waterways. We should probably give you guys an overview. So I've got a sample of plastics. I have some polystyrene, right? The little, uh, this is probably off a of Slurpee, but any clear kind of thin plastic that you put food in, it's typically polystyrene, um, not really recyclable. Uh, this one, I don't know if you can see it, the lighting's kind of bad. This one says P-E-T-E. -E. This is the same kind of plastic, polyethylene terephthalate. It's uh, what you're, pop bottles are made out of, uh, two liter pop bottles, 20 ounce pop bottles, things like that. Okay, we've got uh, PVC, PVC pipe, an elbow. So this is polyvinyl chloride. Uh, I've got a sample of polypropylene and the reason I knew that, I actually looked. Most plastics, again, this might be hard to see. Most plastics inside, there's a little five stamped in there. Um, if they are, whoops, if they are recyclable, they will have a little uh, number code uh, to help you differentiate them um, and we're gonna have you guys do a little research on to what those uh, number codes stand for and then I've got these which you guys know them as Orbeez but they're a super absorbent polymer I think it's uh, the polymer is sodium polyacrylate um, and when you put them in water they're gonna grow so this week's little lab exercise uh, I'm gonna go through some measurements on the Orbeez I also have some large Orbeez that we're going to play with, um, but this would be count as a like non-recyclable um, plastic that kind of falls in the other code when you talk about numbers, so um, in terms of recycling numbers. So um, before we go any further, I want to just talk about what a, what a plastic is. Now, plastic is, is a polymer, and a polymer is, uh, that word has a pretty special meaning, so the word poly or the, the prefix poly um, kind of it means many right so you talk about polynomial polygon um, those things have you know many terms or many sides and so if I take these paper clips chain them together what I'm doing is making a polymer chain and I apologize if the lighting is bad hopefully you guys can see this okay and actually I should have stopped at three. So um, I can keep going. Uh, this is known as a monomer. Mono meaning one, right? When you hook two together, you've created a dimer, meaning two, a trimer. And then we don't really have words for four or more. We call them polymers. And so a polymer can have oh, five links or five units. It could have 5,000 units. Um, if it's your DNA, your DNA is a natural polymer made up of amino acids, uh, or sorry, that's a protein made up of nu nucleotides and nucleic acid. And so um, you can have different types of polymers. Now we have uh, organic polymers like uh, sh different sugars and starches are long chains of carbohydrates. And uh, those are natural polymers. And then we get man-made polymers or plastics, which are long chains of different chemicals. Now, all these chemicals are predominantly made of, or all these plastics are predominantly made of hydrocarbons. So uh, we, you know, drill for oil or we frack for natural gas. And that hydrocarbon, carbon and hydrogen, is turned into these polymers. So I did want to show you guys an example. Let me clear out some space. PVC, for example, I'll leave this here. PVC is called polyvinyl chloride. Or PVC. Okay, and what it is, its unit is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and a chlorine. Now, you hook those together. I'm not going to write it all out. With more and more units, 
right? This was like one paper clip, second paper clip, third paper clip. You hook them all together, you get a long polymer. Now, actually, if we wanted to draw the structure, these carbons kind of like this. Hydrogen's off, one chlorine off. And then you get, here's your one unit. And it's going to repeat that unit many, many times. I could, you know, draw the structure or I could just, these little parentheses are just kind of showing the units. Okay, but then chemists even take it one step further and they'll kind of shorthand it where each zigzag is a unit. And then coming off of these would be a chlorine. Okay, and actually it shouldn't have come off the top. Sorry, those shouldn't have been there. Chlorines off the bottom. So every other carbon has a chlorine. Okay, and then all the empty spaces and all the things that I haven't drawn up here are the hydrogens. Okay, but this would be a polymer. Now, PVC, the polymer strands might be thousands of units long. And that by, by linking together the chemists who made these polymers and the chemical engineers who made these polymers, they changed the physical properties of those carbons and hydrogens and chlorines by making the chain longer and longer. Eventually you get some kind of a rigid plastic when you get all those atoms linked together. Um, and then you get strands side by side. Um, the cool part about this polymer, you're going to see it's called a cross-link polymer. And let me just make a couple chains. I know this video is getting a little long. So if I put together, I'm going to make two chains of five. Just to show you this. Now imagine these being much longer with some chemical structure, a little different than polyvinyl chloride, right? This one you could tell has chlorine in it because it's got the chloride name. I, this has no chlorine in it. Um, we could look up the chemical structure of sodium polyacrylate, but we're just going to cross-link these. So if you get these multiple strands, and then the chemical engineers who designed these have fit in extra bonds. So let's see if I can do this. Between chains. There you go. A little harder to see that'll work it'll be just fine and i'll put one more in just to link it together temporarily so they've taken these polymer chains and created these cross links where polymer chains get hooked together now imagine having a lot of these polymer chains with little linkages um, what you've basically made is some kind of a, a big net Okay, so there's all these carbons and hydrogens hooked together, forming these little pockets. And those pockets are really good at trapping water molecules. Um, now, so that's why these things hold so much water. Um, we don't just use them for, for play. This is actually a lot of times added to, uh, maybe not in these little uh, spherical format, but ground up. This is added to some potting soils, and it helps uh, ret retain water in the soil. Also, this is very similar to the tiny crystals that are inside a baby's diaper, and um, they help ret retain, you know, pee uh, and and not uh, make a mess when the when the baby goes to the bathroom. So there's a lot of uses, right, for each type of polymer. We use certain polymers for food. We use others for plumbing, right? We use these for fun. Um, so hopefully that gives you guys an overview. But again, a polymer is just a uh, repeating chemical structure, right, with lots of units that has a certain physical property that was designed by man. Um, and those are man-made polymers. And then natural polymers, right, uh, DNA, um, long carbohydrates, uh, fat is a natural polymer. Those also have a chemical repeating unit that then give uh, rise to some kind of a physical property. So uh, there's your little chemistry lesson for the day, and hopefully you guys learned a little bit about plastics. So there's going to be a little plastics assignment that goes over some of this intro stuff, um, and then you can see I've got some lab materials out, so hopefully that's a good start.